So probably you marked before from the past video that we got essentially an activation. What's an activation? Essentially you got A and this guy M, they crash. Actually M could be also another molecule of A, but let's, for the sake of this example, use A. Now they crack or they shock, they collide, and this A gets activated. That's why this is called activation. Now it, it comes the deactivation. What does that mean? This guy is going to crack or collide with this and both are relative high on energy but not that much to be excited. And the decomposition is eventually this guy here is going to form the product. So just learn activation, deactivation, decomposition. Now we're going to start proposing reaction mechanisms. Of course with some rules or thumb rules or general rules you cannot propose a mechanism just because you want to. You need to give some set of rules because this is actually extremely complex chemistry kinetics. So let me give you some tips. For example, uh, generally you add one unit to the denominator in case you cannot do it to the elementary rate law. If you have none elementary rate law, you start by doing this. You have to the second power and to the first power you have different case. So you add one. Because actually you can say if, if this one weren't here, you can say the K1 divided by this K comma here and you got your aso to the second and you got your aso to the first. This will be essentially another K and you can cancel this. So this becomes first order, which of course it is not because we are not modeling it as an elementary red law. So let's see the actual methodology is actually simple. Number one, uh, this comes from the thing we've done before. It doesn't, it, it's actually practical. We did it before in the last video. So you have no idea what we're doing. Go back, see the video, watch it slowly. And then you come here and get the idea. Now species having the concentration in the denominator. What's, what's denominator is this number here. So you got CA are probably colliding with the active intermediate. So this guy here, this is the active intermediate. You are colliding this guy here. So A is here. Makes sense. If a constant appears in the denominator, so let's say K, the denominator once again is down. One of the reaction steps is uh, the composition of the intermediate. So you have this intermediate is decomposing itself because of that K. That's general rules, thumb rules. It doesn't mean that this is always the case, but in general, you can say that. And three, the species having concentration in the numerator, so this number right here up, probably are the product of the active intermediates. So this guy here goes up. So it's easy, just A goes down. If a constant goes here, is a decomposition. And the numerator, in general, is the product. You can read this other table. I, don't, I, will not, I will not read it to you because it's actually easy. Well, let me just give you a small summary. Assume an active intermediate, which is the one we've used before. Postulate a mechanism. This one you, depends on you. Model each reaction. You will need at least the intermediate reaction plus the first reaction and the final reaction. Use the PSSH or the pseudo steady state hypothesis, which says that essentially the rate loss of a intermediate material will be zero. Now eliminate the concentration, okay, okay, and generally solve. And if the derived rate law does not agree with the experimental observ observation, of course it doesn't work. Science works like this. Experiment experimental observation goes first before theory. So you need to assume a new mechanism or intermediates and start all over. Good luck with that. And I know guys this is so theoretical but I don't want to uh, take a lot of time in this chapter because probably many uh, students are not going to watch this and if you watch it it's because you stumble because or you need it a little bit but if you really really need it uh, I think you're studying chemistry and not that much engineering, but 
Anyways, you can go to my courses. I got a little bit exercises, maybe five to ten. And yeah, just click here, go to courses, check out Reactor Engineering, Chapter 7. And you will find a lot, well, not, not a lot, some examples. And remember, this is an overview for our course of Reactor Engineering. Sorry if you wanted to know all the truth about mechanisms and chemistry, kinetics, etc. This is just an overview so you have an idea of what are we doing. Next, we have the chain reactions, but I think I'm going to do that in another video. What's up guys? It's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.